Hello, everybody. My name is Anna Carolina Pereira. I'm a college professor teaching in the game arts and VR departments at Ringling College of Art and Design, a Pixelogic ZBrush Live official streamer. I have a mentorship program, and I am a technical and character artist. Today, I'm very excited to start a brand new series on my channel called ZBrush Basics. We're going to go over how to use Z-Spheres to create armatures for your models. By the time you're done with this video, you'll know everything you need to know about Z-Spheres, how to use them, when to use them, and how to integrate them into your workflow. Let's get started. This is how you start a Z-Sphere. With a brand new ZBrush document, you can go to Tool and simply pick Z-Sphere. It's this red sphere right here. And just like any tool, you need to drag it in before you can start messing with it. I'm going to go to edit mode and now I can rotate around it. I can add new Z-spheres, etc. So what are Z-spheres for? They are a great way to create an armature or the overall shape and block out of your character. You can create a skeleton with it. You can even rig and pose characters in ZBrush with Z-spheres. If you want a tutorial on that, let me know in the comments below. So there are four main modes for Z-spheres. You can actually find them up here. We have draw, move, scale, and rotate. Draw is activated by Q, which you can see by when I hover over here. Move is W, scale is E, and rotate is R. Draw adds Z-spheres into your mesh. All you have to do is click and drag. If you want symmetry, simply press X on the keyboard. You can also go to transform and activate symmetry and change the axis. You can have symmetry on the X, Y, Z axis, or even radial. I want to keep it simple with the X. So I'm going to add two Z spheres. Let's make a little human body. So these are going to be the shoulders. And the first Z sphere is going to be the chest. To move a Z sphere, all you have to do is press W and drag. And you can move it in any direction. Or, and you can pull it away or push it closer. When a Z-Sphere turns kind of invisible or messy like this, normally that indicates some sort of problem. And when you try to turn your Z-Spheres into a sculptable mesh, you might encounter a problem if you let them do that. So I try to keep my Z-Spheres clean, making sure that everything looks like a little sphere. To scale a Z-Sphere, you press E, and you can simply click and drag on the Z-Sphere you wish to scale. If you pull away, it'll become bigger. If you push in, it'll become smaller. You can also rotate a Z-Sphere. To demonstrate that, I'm going to add a new one and move it farther away. Then I'm going to press R and select the Z-Sphere I want to rotate, and you'll notice that it's actually rotating. It's not moving or anything, it's just rotating. Look at that. I'm going to tell you a secret. I normally don't use the rotate function, I just use the move to create the quote rotations, like this. Let's go ahead and kind of plug in maybe the, the torso. To create a Z-Sphere going down the center symmetrically, all you have to do is let your mouse hover close to the center, and once the two spheres, I mean the two cursors touch, that's when you know you've got a perfectly symmetrical single sphere. Okay, there we have a little human. To add another Z-Sphere in between Z-Spheres that you already have, all you have to do is press Q to go into draw mode and click anywhere in between two Z-Spheres. Now you have a whole new set of Z-Spheres. To delete a Z-Sphere, all you have to do is go into draw mode and alt-click it, and it will go away. If you grab at that handle in between two Z-Spheres, you'll actually move the entire system, everything in the hierarchy. So you'll move that Z-Sphere and the ones underneath it, like this. I personally like having the control of moving one Z-Sphere at a time. Z-Spheres are not sculptable. In order for them to be sculptable, you must turn them into a normal mesh. You can preview what your mesh looks like by pressing down A on the keyboard. And that will give you the preview like this. But you should not sculpt on this yet, so we're not ready yet to start sculpting. You can click Polyframe right here, which is also accessible by Shift S, F, sorry, 
to see the polyframe, which is the polygons and the polygroups. You can tell that it's a little high poly, and that's because it's already dynameshed in its preview. We might not want that. The way to change the adaptive skin is to go right here in the tool palette to adaptive skin. You can see if preview is turned on and off. So this button does the same thing as pressing A. And I'm going to go ahead and hit preview and turn the Dynamesh off, preview again. And you'll notice that now we don't have Dynamesh. We have big polygons. You can change the density of these polygons or basically the subdivision by messing with the, with the density button. So you see it goes up and down. I think density one or two are ideal for starting to sculpt. The lower the polygon counts that you have at the beginning when you're blocking out your mesh, the better it is for maintaining control. Once you're ready, you can click Make Adaptive Skin, and that will, did you see the change here? That will add the adaptive skin, like real model that you can uh, sculpt in, right in here as one of your tools. This one right here is the original one that has the Z-sphere. As you can tell by pressing A, it changes. And also, if I go to Geometry, on the original Z-Sphere one, you'll notice that I'm lacking a lot of the options that I usually get with my models. If I go to the copy that it just made with the adaptive skin, when I press A, nothing happens, and I have all of my usual oops, <laughs> and I have all of my usual options right here. And I can just get to sculpting. Needs a booty. Perfect. That is literally it. That is how Z-Spheres work. The best part is that even after you make adaptive skin, you still have really clean polygroups to work from. You can just select them by pressing Control shift and it just makes your workflow a lot more clean. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment on this video and share it with your friends. If you want to stay up to date with my latest artwork, content, tutorials, free stuff, and whatnot, make sure to find me on social media and give me a follow. It's also one of the best ways to get a hold of me. Last but not least, my workshops and one-on-one -on -one mentorships will be opening for new enrollments on the 1st of January. To read more about it or get on the waiting list, just use the link below.